Hey everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. This time we're using one stencil and we're using it three ways. So these are the beautiful floral stencils from Valentina Harper from TCW, part of the new release. And we're going to use one of those throughout this journey journal page. So I've gessoed the page and taped off the edge and I'm selecting my colors and I'm going blues, greens, purples, an analogous, analogous color scheme. They're all next to each other on the color wheel. And I just want to stencil, use this stencil to create background interest. I'm not using this stencil as a focal image. I want to just get to know it. It's the first time I'm putting paint through this stencil. I'm just using different colors. I'm not too worried about getting precise, but when you are stenciling, you want to tap into the paint and tap off on your craft mat surface. So that you don't get the paint seeping under but I'm not being particularly careful and as you can see I'm going over the edges again I know that this is just going to be the background at this point I have no idea where this page is going to end up I have no other plan other than I'm going to use this stencil to create the background and that's okay we don't need to have every step figured out. We can just start and figure it out as we go. Every decision we make on an art journal page will lead us to the next one. Here I'm just mixing, you know, two or three colors of paint on the makeup sponge and then layering it up. And what I'm doing here sets the theme. It's going, I'm going to go floral. It also sets the color scheme. We're in that blue, purple. It's going to give me an overall feeling that's going to guide future choices. So I didn't like that green there. It just seemed out of place. So I'm stenciling over top of it. I think I come back and I put gesso to white it out. And then I come back with colors more like in the, in the purple blue tone. You don't like what something's there, you can get rid of it. So this, I'm loving the look of this, adding a little bit of green in the white spaces that exist, thinking floral. And then I just keep stenciling. I'm having fun. And admittedly, this ends up being a bit of a mess. But my goal was to get background pattern. And Valentina's stencils, aside from being this beautiful floral, which we are going to use as a focal image, also has all these wonderful patterns in them. And here I'm just stenciling down some of that pattern. This is as if you are really close to a bouquet. So now I'm using that same stencil and I'm creating my own tracer or template with it. And I'm tracing this out on paper because I want to play around with the composition of these flowers. So I cut that out and now I've played with it. I'm going to have three of them working in odds, seems to always be more pleasing to the eye. I have some, you know, each of them are off the page a little bit, showing on the page different amounts. Now I'm using my Ink Tense pencils to trace and I've chosen a color that I will A, be able to see, and B is going to be that purpley color that's already in the background. I didn't want to put black at this time, because when I add paint here, I didn't want that to muddy the, the color. 
and ink tints are permanent when they're dry, so this isn't something that's going to reactivate after it's set. So I'm going to save those tracers and use them for another project. Now I'm taking where I trace and I'm putting a coat of gesso. I'm using an angle brush. This one I believe is a half inch angle brush. I like it. It gets right to the edges. It seems effortless. And I'm, I want to make these flowers the focal image. And at this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to be reusing the stencil, which, spoiler alert, I do, or if I was just going to paint this and do my own painting. I was thinking I was just going to stencil in the center part and the, leave the petals and do some shading on my own. But as I said, I was open to the possibility of my plan changing. You take a chance, you make a choice, it leads you to a new place. And sometimes you need to change what your plan is. So that wasn't, didn't quite block it off enough, so I do give this a second coat of gesso. because I really didn't want to see that background on this focal image. Now my plan here was to paint this, stencil in the center and paint it, and I so that's why I wanted that background to go. I wanted the background to be the background and the... So I'm using purple gray, a new color from Liquitex Basics that I just recently purchased, and turquoise, and I'm mixing them on the brush as I paint. Here I just want the base coat to the flower before, as I'm thinking at this point, that I'm going to shade and highlight. And I love how the background here has the same shapes as the focal image. And that's the benefit of using the same stencil in different ways. I'm adding some white. <coughs> I got a little too blendy here. But I know that in my mind right now, this is just the base coat. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The quote that I picked for this, start where you are, do what you can, use what you have, is kind of guide. It was I selected it because that I feel that was my, po per, my process on this one. I just started. I used what I had. I tried to limit the supplies. Now I'm using that same stencil. So this is a third way that I'm using it. And I am masking off around the edge because I'm going to put white pearl modeling paste through this stencil and I don't want it to go over the edge. So I'm just ripping tape and shaping it around to mask it off, keep it off my background. And also to get that stencil flat. And I'm taking a palette knife and I'm putting the white pearl modeling paste through it. This has a shimmer to it, a pearlescence that I absolutely love. It looks so good if you did this on a canvas. And then you pull it back. Now, because I have to reapply this on the other two, I need to wash the stencil, reapply the masking tape around it, and then come back in and do the next. Now these flowers are far enough apart so there's no problem with me messing up the others. I don't have to stop and wait for it to dry. If they were closer, um, you may need to stop and let it dry. And now I'm doing the third one in much the same way. I tape it down, and then I use the palette knife to apply the modeling paste.
So it was three trips to cleaning the stencils, three times taping it. So it was a little bit more, but I absolutely love the dimensional feel. Now, because I stenciled with white, I felt that the background was competing with my focal image, my three focal images. So I am mixing the turquoise and purple and giving a wash across to push all that back. You're still seeing all that stenciling that we did at the beginning. It's just pushed back and it's allowing the focal image to be front and center. Now I'm using my General's charcoal pencil, the extra soft one, to edge around. I'm getting to the point, and I know my sentiment's going to have black in it, so <clears throat> I want to introduce that. I like the feathered look that this gives. And I'm start around here, and then I decide I'm going to, there's that border around the focal image. And I'm painting that with the purple and blue. And I'm using a very small angle brush. And the reason I'm doing this is I want these focal images to stand up from the background. That stencil is just to die for. The detail in it, this is the six inch one. It also comes in 12 inch. I love it. And I, where this page ended up, I can see doing this very similarly on a, on a canvas. Now I wanted to have that kind of feathering look. So I'm taking the charcoal pencil and rubbing it on where I've added the purple and dark blue and just making it look like more of a shadow, more feathered look that matches the outside. Loving, loving, loving that look. Now remember, the charcoal pencil is not permanent. If you put water on it or anything wet, it will move and you don't want that. So now you have to remember that you have to be careful. I'm using the Faber-Castell sharpener to sharpen my charcoals pencil. I use that for my ink tense pencils as well. The good sharpener has different sizes. Just building up the shading. And you can see how the focal images really stand out from the background at this point in time. So now I'm going to move to possib the possible sentiments and I'm auditioning several. I'm not sure, I'm thinking maybe a black sentiment, black background with white letters and I'm cutting them up. This is my process. I have to, I'm visual, I need to see it before I can make those decisions. So I play with it and I do it. If I don't use this one, it goes in my stash and it's there afterwards. I don't mind this. This would be, I don't end up using this one, but I do actually like the black with the white lettering on here. And it goes, that goes well with the shading I did around the scent, around everything. Trying it if I put the page this way, a different orientation, because again, I really didn't make a choice. That sentiment doesn't have enough. I don't like the blank ones. This one I chose because it has three parts and I have three open areas. And this is the way the sentiment goes. Start what you where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And just because that middle one is a smaller space, I just swapped up the sentiment. So I changed the sentiment a bit. 
but you can do that with these sentiments. Uh, you could also have just used one part of this if you were doing an ATC. You don't have to use all parts of the quote. You can edit that and use the part that you want. This sentiment will be part of my new, um, not sure what the name is going to be, but it'll be about possibility, my word of the year. I think when you start, when you do what you can, when you use what you have, you have to be open to the possibilities that can arise. And it's about being positive. So I needed a little more detail in the background, so I grabbed the purple and blue, mixed it on the sponge, and I'm just stenciling in that center motif. It's giving a little bit of contrast, and it's allowing the stencil to be used yet one more time, which I guess is the fourth time, and with a different purpose. It's a little more forward. I didn't want to introduce a different pattern to my background. Now, this would have been easier to do before I did the focal image and everything, but I didn't know that this is where I was going to end up. So there's always a way of doing it. It might be a little more difficult, but it's okay. Now I'm taking some silver paint, spraying water in it, using my fan brush, and I'm going to splatter with the silver. Silver is a good complement with the blue tones that we've got going on here. Just adds a shimmer to the background as well. That There's that shimmer in that white pearl modeling paste. And I'm totally in love with this page. Grab my Secura Glaze Black, and I am going to trace around the sentiment. And that's just introducing the black there as well. It's a little detail. It, does make a difference though. Taking off the tape that I to keep all the gunk out of the coils. And there we have it. So remember, start where you are, do what you can, use what you have, and look for the possibilities. Be open to the possibilities in that art journal process and in life. So right now we're going to do a recap of all the steps. So we started with stenciling to create pattern in the background. We are using an Anaglas color scheme. Those are colors that are next to each other on a color wheel. They work well together and they don't typically make mud. So you're going to be successful. Then we made our own tracer by tracing this, the stencil. We put modeling paste through that very same stencil. Now to knock the background back, we applied a wash of color. We put on a sentiment. We edged and shaded. And we did add splattering on here. Actually, we came back and did some stenciling to provide a little more detail, contrast pattern. And then we splattered. Thank you for joining me. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, share this video and my channel with your creative friends. And until next time, go get creative.